The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 6th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now, today you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. You've got the uh, Dow trading up 32 points. The S&P is flat. NASDAQ 100 up 11. Russell's off 11. Semi's down 45. Tranny's down 46. We've got gold up 11 bucks. That's about a half a percent. Nearly 3% for silver, 80 cent move there. Lights we crude up 64 pennies. Natural gas up a penny right now. And the 30 year treasury print out at 119.07, basically unchanged. Our leaders to the upside, logistic properties of the Americas. 26 bucks or 82%. Eli Lilly, 7 bucks, less than 1%. Costco, 13 bucks, 1 and 6 tenths percent. Salesforce up about 9, nearly 4%. Lululemon, 12 bucks, 4% move. To the downside, super micro. 31 bucks, 4%. NVIDIA, 12 bucks, 1%. Broadcom, 9 bucks, 6 tenths percent. Five below, 16 bucks. Lamb Research is off 12. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's begin our day where? Let's begin our day playing a game of liar's poker. So we had uh, what looks like, you know, nice big old rallies out there yesterday. We're at new all time highs in the SP inside the NASDAQ. In fact, we talk about new all time highs for the SP 500. Let's go see where we're actually at today. So today, a new all-time high forms price in U.S. dollars. Not so in euros just yet. So it makes Stevie say, hmm, something to think about. Now, we might get there at day's end. We have made a new all-time high today in S&P priced in a yen, not in the Great British Pound, not in the Australian dollar, not in the Swiss Corona, not in the Swiss Franc, not in the Chinese one. And uh, we have made a new all-time high in Canadian dollars. The best rallies are when price is making high in all these major currencies. That includes the, the uh, euro and the Great British Pound out there. So we're not. So it just offers a caution sign out there. There's another caution sign. This one's brought to you by Peter from Park City. And that's that New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. And we take a look at that. Again, the Advanced Decline Oscillator is nothing more than the difference between two moving averages. I use the exponential moving averages of 39 and 19. That goes in. That's what uh, is actually used. Uh, and, and if we take a look at, uh, and that's of the Advanced Decline Line. That creates an oscillator. Difference between two things. In this case here, when that oscillator is above zero, tells us that the buyers are the ones that are in control. You would have thought with yesterday's rally, that's what we'd be looking at. We are not. Price is still below that zero threshold line. Now, why isn't the market tanking? Market's not tanking because the spot volatility isn't above its 50-day exponential moving average, and it continues to move lower out there. But if this does reverse course, that says, hmm, we may not have anything to think about. 
So there's a couple of things that are in the market that we take a look at in these charts that just say, caution Will Robinson. Let's go take a look at my other charts out here. The other charts I'm referring to, the white background charts will change over. It's actually not going to be the one that pops up first. That's Caterpillar. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, let's go take a look at our multi time frame set of charts, just daily, weekly, and monthly. By the way, for, let's see, I think this is the S&P 5. No, it's at NASDAQ. Let's stick with the, that's a, actually, I should pull up the Dow. Here's the Dow. So if we take a look at the Dow, so if we, if we think of the Dow as being the place where big money parks, okay, big money parks itself, the Dow has not been performing well. So that is, we're not near the all-time high. Now we take a look at the Dow Equity Future Contract. Now we take a look at the index. Now we take a look at the ETF. Now we take a look at the equal-weighted uh, Dow, the EWO, EDOW is what I should say. So this has reason to be cautious out here with regard to the rally because big money hasn't bought in. That's really sort of what we were seeing as well. We took a look at how the Dow was pricing those major currencies out there. So that's the charts for the Dow. You can see price up at the oscillator and change line for all four of these charts out there. Again, it suggests caution. Now, let's go from the Dow. Let's go take a look at the S&P 5, or the NASDAQ, I should say. So the NASDAQ yesterday took out its B point of an A to B equals C to the upside. So it's got that pr price projection in there. But when we take a look at the QQEW, and the same, same is true. For the NDX 100, the cash index, same is true for the QQQ ETF. When we take a look at the equal weighted Dow, um, we're trading into its all-time swing point high. Let's see, what kind of volume did we do yesterday? Yes, well, the, the swing point we're referring to is back on May 23rd. Volume there, 116 million shares. Yesterday, we closed inside it with 45 million shares. So we're coming into it with light volume. The, even the Qs are suggesting. Now, what this chart tells you, and I, um, is that uh, all of the movement is really coming from the weighted stocks? Okay, so it's, it's coming from the weighted, not the you know. When, so so that says that also could create some problems out there. But would also that tells us so we should go take a look what how the weighted instruments are doing. Here, just to wrap this up, here's the S and P 500, uh, the S and P 500. Now the cash index yesterday went ahead and confirmed an A to B equals C D pound on the upside. So did the S and P. So did the spies out there. But the ES Mini did not. So that's why when we started the show, I suggest that 536825 is going to be the key level to be watching for that. If price closes above it, it'll trigger a A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We look at the equal weighted stocks here for the S&P 500. It hasn't gotten past that oscillator and change line, which is currently printed 16560. So these equal weighted ETFs are suggesting caution. New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator suggesting caution. So I do something. This is a, a, a mini version of the chart that I produce each day for subscribers out there. Um, actually, I do it in the morning. I believe, and that's a, a summary of the top 10. Maybe I do it during the afternoon, the evening session as well. Uh, that was, shoot, you know what? That wasn't the one that I wanted to put up. Uh, well, it's the one that's up right now. So here, what this is showing us is the top 10 instruments for the Dow. They represent 57% of the weighting. Top 10 instruments for the S&P, 34% of the weighting. The NDX 100, 48% of the weighting. The Russell 2000, only 6% of the weighting. The semiconductors, 58% of the weighting. Now, I can't put if it's – so some of these, if you take a look, if you're going to take a snapshot of this set of charts, or what I'm really looking for on this set of charts are the topping signals. For example, the daily roads momentum indicator signals, or TD9s. You can see out here right now, in the case of Caterpillar, it has a uh, bottom signal. That's bar number 9 of its pattern. That's why Caterpillar was up on that screen. We went to it. We've got some wave G patterns out here. But what we'll do is we'll go take a look at the, the uh, we'll take a look at we'll take a look at the NDX 100 and we'll go see how its top weighted instruments are doing. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's take a look at the uh, top 10 weighted instruments inside the NDX 100. We begin by taking a look at um, uh, Microsoft. And we take a look at Microsoft here. Uh, Microsoft has a sell the D point pattern. Price got back towards its breakout level at 4186. And right now it's still just trading with inside its a daily profile. We should notice about Microsoft. We took a look at this, or I mentioned this uh, when we take a look at um, one of the other instruments out there. But when price closes below the bottom of a profile, which this has done for more than two consecutive sessions, not the bottom of profile, the bottom of a bullish structured profile. And it does for more than two consecutive sessions. And that's one of the cool things about these profiles. That's something I discovered on my own after looking at thousands and thousands of charts out there. And that is if it's only a counter trend move, right? Because that's what we're trying to understand. Is the move a counter trend move or is the move a beginning of some new move to the upside? Well, from a profile standpoint, from a folklore language standpoint out there, 4023.80 is a level where Microsoft would find resistance but just a counter trend move. That's what transpired yesterday. It was a nice rally day, nice wide-ranging bar, so to speak. Price actually closed at 424.01, and the uh, center of that profile, 423.80. That was tested again today, and so far that's held. So right now we can put on our list right here is that Microsoft is a little bit suspect. It actually could be forming an A to B equals C to the downside. Maybe it's a sideways consolidation. I don't know. Apple is in wave number seven. It got to that. I think it's been in wave number seven for the last three or four trading sessions. It needs a lower high to confirm that pattern. Uh, Basil may have already discussed this. I don't know. But what it will also need, it, was, it would need a close below that oscillator and change line. And that's currently printed 194.64. If Apple were to do that, we'd have a wave seven top, price below the oscillator and change line. Tells us that it would be, uh, have a, uh, uh, that it should continue to move lower. And its level, if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, where Apple would find support, would be where? 
189.17 because that was a bearish structured profile. So you're getting this bullish and bearish structured profile when the center is closer to the top or bottom in proximity. That's what gives us that bullish or bearish designation. NVIDIA is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, what you and I know is that on a TD9 count, the top must come on bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar number nine. So it's met that first qualification. Tomorrow, though, all price has to do in order to generate a TD9 count top is close above this level, 1150, even Steven. If price does that, NVIDIA will have a confirmed TD9 count top. It would complete on Monday. There's also Rosemont Dominicator signal present. If we were to get a bearish reversal candle, which we could get today, could easily get a dark cloud cover candle, that would confirm a Rosemont Dominicator top. Still the same outcome, price would need to close below its oscillator and change line. That's at 11.43. Otherwise, it's just a pullback to support after a top. Amazon. Amazon is uh, dealing with profile resistance right now. If it can close above it, it being 183.67, or 183.76. If you can close above that, we should see a rally towards the 189.89 level. Otherwise, you've got Amazon up at resistance. So the top four, Amazon up at resistance, could turn down. TD9 count potential, maybe Roachman to indicator top in NVIDIA. Apple wave number seven top, if it doesn't make a higher high today. Bearish reversal candle would confirm a Roachman to indicator top. And Microsoft has just made that counter trend move to the upside. So remember, we take a look at the how the indices were trading. And Stevie was saying, in a game of liars poker, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying the breakout signals that I see just yet. Now, I'll change my mind when we get that additional proof, the ETFs for the uh, equal weighted and so forth. Now, if we take a look at Facebook out here, Meta, this already has a, I believe it's a confirmed A to B equal C to the B point, had volume of 13 million. Uh, yesterday, as an example, 15 million. So it's got a confirmed A to B equals CD. Takes up towards the 520 level out there. Uh, Broadcom, Avgo, Broadcom has got a, still got a TD9 count top. It's straight into its swing point that formed that TD9 count, which had volume of 2.8 million shares. Yesterday was a beautiful day. To the upside was with 3.2 million shares. Was suggesting to you and I that at least price should go test that high. Well, in order to do that, price needs to stay above 1405.06. We're below that level right now. The volume so far today is about uh, 600,000 shares. That's about 1.8 million, give or take, against 2.8. You can get Avgo to give you a uh, test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. Can't bust on the upside, you try to bust on the downside. Google still has a road to indicator uh, topping pattern that's in place out here. And a Tesla continues to find resistance at, at its oscillator and change line. So here's the eight instruments that represent a significant portion of the NDX 100. And you didn't hear me get all giddy about what's going on. In fact, it just, and I hadn't done this. Um, I was at the doctor's earlier. I wanted to get back sooner. I, I didn't. Then I get back. Then my internet's out. So on top of being basically sick. You know, that stuff made me sick on top of that. And anyways, we were able to get up and running. And if it does shut down, I've had problems all morning long, that'll probably be the end of today's shows. But uh, so here with regard to the, the Qs and the NASDAQ, you know, it closed above the swing point. Maybe it's going to go ahead and fulfill that A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. But right now, Stevie isn't buying it. That doesn't mean I'm saying go short. I'm saying we need other signals in order for that to happen. But I'm just not buying it just yet. Um, let's go take a look at some requests that have come in because we can come back. I can do this with these charts, you know, all day long, only really because my throat, probably not for much longer than 34 minutes. But let's take a look at um, let's go take a look at Dr. Copper. We looked at this yesterday. This is for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. So we'll get to the uh, copper charts out here and see what they're communicating to you and I. So, Mr. Bill, one of the keys out here that I believe one of the real keys is a couple different things. First of all, in the daily time frame, a TD9 count pattern completed yesterday. So that suggests that we at least should see Dr. Copper, Dr. Copper rally up. I'm on the wrong chart. Sorry about Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you're just seeing that man run across the uh, screen out there. So this will probably help you. Yes, I think so. Okay. So now we take a look at Dr. Copper there. You can see that on the daily time frame, yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count. We don't need this A to B equals CD pattern. Never fulfilled that. Didn't, 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 didn't have to. It formed a TD9 count pattern. By the way, the high out here, the most recent high inside of copper was a TD9 count pattern as well. So, Mr. Bill, price should, and the nice thing about copper pulling back and forth in that TD9 count on the daily time frame, it was above its breakout level. 
And the second thing that was nice is it was uh, just testing that green weekly oscillator and change line. So as long as those conditions hold, copper looks pretty good. What will copper do when it gets to the 479 level? I don't know. But that's where the first battle will be. As we look at those intraday charts out there, um, it looks to me like the two-hour chart is going to negate a TD9 count top. The uh, four-hour chart, though, is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top. It's going to do that. I believe this bar ends at 2 p.m., but let me just make sure of that for you. So then you uh, – 2 p.m. So what I would do, Mr. Bill, is I would watch copper at 2 p.m., and I would mark down whatever the high has been. It would be on this candle session, I believe. Yeah, so whatever that high is. And if price starts trading above that, that's what you want to see. And, of course, if it closes above that on a, a four-hour bar – uh, then you're in good shape out there with regard to copper. So right now, the call is heading up to that 479 level out there when we take a look at uh, copper. You also want to take a look at FCX. So let's go ahead and close these charts down. Give me a moment to do that. <clears throat> and sorry about that, folks. So we're going to go to a break here, which is perfect for my voice. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break. And then we'll come back. We'll take a look at FCX for Mr. Bill. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so let's take a look at FCX. Really kind of goes along the theme of Dr. Copper. We can see, if you remember, Dr. Copper was making a TD9 count. It was doing it at its breakout level. Turns out that FCX was really doing the same thing, with the exception not of TD9 count pattern. Price got back to its breakout level two days ago, 49.43, tested and held, bouncing with copper. Now, where this is going to run into resistance potentially is at 51.44, Mr. Bill. That's the top of its base. So it's trading inside. It's a bear structured sell zone out there. I'm not so worried about it because price was able to take that out without any sweat, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But it is still a resistance battle. 51.44, the real resistance level should be at about 52.69. Weekly chart has a sell the D point top. It did that a couple of weeks ago. So far, that oscillator and change line has held the support for FCX at the present time. That number is printing at. 5101. As long as price remains above that, you're in pretty good shape out there. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, no problems here that we see. So FCX looks good. It's got a battle at 5144, another battle at 5269. If it did close below 4943, that would tell us that it is headed lower out there. So Mr. Bill, hope that helps you out for FCX. Why a why inside the Tiger's Den? Wanted to take a look at ticker symbol KOLD. It's cold out there. And KOLD, he wanted really just the profile level. So let me give you those first. Daily support, 3850. Daily resistance, 4943. Weekly support, 4038. Weekly resistance, 5259. Monthly support is between 2853 and 3519. And resistance up at 6184. So those are the profile levels, what you were looking for. On a daily time frame, Let's see if this formed a buy the D point pattern out here. Was there an A to B? Well, more certainly there was. That was confirmed with this gap up to the to the upside back on May 24th. That gap has been closed. It's effectively closed today out here. But price is still trading with inside this profile and below a red oscillator and change line. So what I would say why oh why is that there's a pot and this is a slightly bear structured profile. So I would say odds favor and we'll go take a look at an intraday chart. That price wants to move back towards that support level of 38.50. That's what I see when I take the daily time frame. The confirmation of that would likely come from some type of intraday chart. So let's go see what we've got out here for signals. I do have a wave number seven bottom. It would appear, let me see. Yeah, a uh, wave number seven bottom. That identified a bottom. We've been rallying, so that's okay. Let's look at the 30 minute time frame chart out here because that's not supporting a further move lower uh, at all. Let's see what's going on just one step below that. And this has a TD9 count top. So here's what you'd want to watch. Because if price takes out that high, the high of the pattern, which is up at 2073, the 30-minute time frame chart is going to suggest that this is going to rally further. So let's open back up and take a look at the daily time frame. Rally to where? I'd say it could rally easily up to that oscillator and change line. That's your resistance level at 4505 out there. Um, on a weekly basis, this formed a buy the D point pattern three weeks ago with that bullish hammer candle that's out there. So as long as if you ever see price close below 46.54, uh, then KOLD for its weekly time frame is in real trouble. Right now, what you have going on is a consolidation with inside that weekly profile. I gave you those numbers 40.38 to 52.59 out there. And on the monthly time frame chart, it has a sell the D point pattern. Price has found support. And that support right now is in the buy zone that formed this month, again, between 28.53 and 35.19 out there. So in order for this to get it going to the upside, you need to see a daily close above that 45.05 level. You wouldn't be out of the woods, YOY, but those woods ought to take you up to 49.43, where you try to chop down a few more trees so that you can actually <coughs> form an A to B equals CD to the upside. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> Gonna have to give me a minute on this one. <coughs> Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try to move over to Uber. This is for Nicholas. 
So Nick goes Uber on his daily time frame's got a roads meant to mitigate her bottom. This might be tough for you guys to listen to. <clears throat> uh, so if Uber can close above sixty eight fifty seven, then you'd have a profile. We won't have a profile. You got a profile change in trend yesterday and today, but you'd have a real change in trend because price would be closing above its TD nine count breakdown level. Now, what you also like about Uber? Last week, it completed a TD nine count bottom. While it was doing that, it was forming that rose momentum indicator bottom on the daily time frame. On the weekly chart out here, price is just consolidating with inside its uh, daily uh, profile out there. It's traded into that area where just a counter trend move to the downside would find support in that 60, 65, 32 area. So <clears throat> at this stage here, Uber looks like it wants to continue to rally. And if it can clear 68.57, your next battle will be 70.79. And if it can clear 77.9, then you'll get up to the 73.43 area. So, Nicholas, that's what I see. We take a look at uh, Uber out there. Uh, you had asked something about shorting the semis out here. We'll come back to that one. I don't have the charts ready for that, but we'll come back and take a look at what the uh, semi charts are telling us. Dana wanted to take a look at MU and a Micron out here. So, Dano, today it appears, now the day is not over, it's only 11.36, I don't need to tell you that. But if the day were over, you would have a daily roads to indicator top with price back inside its daily profile and below its greenhouse center and change line. That would tell us that price should target 127.29, 124.28, and if it closes below that, it would target the 113.45 level. So the potential for a daily top won't know until the session ends today. On a weekly basis, last week was a sell the D point pattern. That was a bearish engulfing candle that formed. And what Price did, though, was it found support at that oscillator and change line. And so I don't know, Dano, if you're looking, if you're more of a day or swing type trader, if you're more of an intermediate term, this is a, a longer holding, I wouldn't exit this position unless I saw a weekly close below that oscillator and change line. Getting back, even though you've got a top, getting back and testing that takes us to neutral. And the monthly time frame says... You are going to likely form a TD9 count top this month. You will complete that pattern next month out there. So the daily, watch its uh, candle formation today. Watch 124.85. <coughs> How to move lower. <clears throat> okay, let's try to take a look at DocuSign. <coughs> DocuSign closed below a hammer candle. What pattern was being set up here? <clears throat> so I tell you what, folks, we've got about 10 seconds before we go to a hard break out there. I can almost hear the music playing. So I'm going to hold off on doing DocuSign, <clears throat> try to readdress this uh, throat issue that I've got, uh, which means I'm going to suck on some honey here in just a moment. See if we can get that to just kind of smooth itself out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at DocuSign. This is for Dano inside the Tiger's Den. So, Dano, first thing that I see here in the uh, current the current uh, data is an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So I just drew in the A to B line. I'm going to draw this over to the C point out there. And you can see you had this hammer candle that formed. So it confirmed an A to B equals CD. The low on that hammer candle was 53.50. You closed below it the following day at 53.44. So that pattern no longer exists. This needs another bullish reversal candle, DocuSign, to confirm a bottom. Price is below its red oscillator and change line. It's below uh, the daily profile out there. This suggests to you and I that price should go target its most recent swing points down in the February area. Uh, around the 49 to 50 uh, zone out there. So that's what the daily time frame chart tells us for DocuSign. The weekly time frame chart is um, echoing that same message. It says it wants lower price. Unless it can close the week back above 55.26, we need to do that tomorrow. It's target to the downside. Now, I'm not saying this where it's going, Dano. I'm sorry, uh, G-Man wanted uh, DocuSign. It's 39.65. And you've got a consolidation on the monthly time frame out there. So uh, I don't see a whole lot in this uh, chart or in this uh, set of charts out there other than it's suggesting it wants to head lower. Hope that helps you out. Uh, Dan inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at the TLT. We take a look at the TLT. Did it confirm an A to B equals CD pattern on the upside? The swing point had volume of 37 million. It was passed with 42 million. So the TLT isn't a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. Let's draw in the A to B point out there. Let's move that to the C point. And let's go see what its initial price projection is. Somewhere around. <clears throat> well, you're not that far away. Somewhere in the 94, towards the 94 level. Now, remember, that's just the one-to-one. -one. That does not mean that's where price is going to stop. What you'd be looking for as price gets to the 94 area, you'd be on watch for some type of bearish reversal candle. That would then confirm that sell the D-point pattern. The monthly or the weekly chart looks good. You're trading above profile. That says it wants to head higher. And the monthly chart shows a consolidation. So the next real resistance level that stands out to me is 95.65. That is the top of the monthly profile. So, Dan, I hope that that helps you out with TLT. Um, Nicholas had wanted to take a look at the SMHs. He's uh, getting giddy and would like to take a short. So let's go see what kind of signals we can see out here. Well, first of all, there is no topping pattern. 
There is a rose momentum indicator signal that is present. That requires a bearish reversal candle, much like we saw when this topped out here. The SMHs, they topped on May, I'm sorry, March the 8th out there. Rose momentum indicator signal, and there was that big old bearish engulfing candle that identified that top out there. So we don't have a topping pattern as we speak right now uh, for it. And uh, <clears throat> on the daily time frame. So I say no short here because you're above profile above it without a topping signal and above the greenhouse and change line. Same conditions for the weekly chart and same conditions for the monthly chart. So where I started the show saying I'm not buying it, when I took a look at the other indices, the SMHs can absolutely push things higher. And I don't see a top as we speak at the moment. So I hope that helps you out. And thanks always for the request. Let's go out to uh, John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Uh, Steve, I'm doing well, and uh, we're all here in support of you. Thank you. We, uh, we trust you'll uh, you'll uh, be on the road to mend. You bet. You bet. Another a, a weekend <laughs> of rest. <laughs> yeah. So Very you want to take um, you want to take lights we crude right? Uh, yeah. This um, this past week, the uh, the notable development this week. Was the was the uh, aggressive selling that took place Monday and Tuesday? Yes, and that evidently was triggered by uh, the meeting of OPEC Plus, which is OPEC uh, and Russia. And uh, price came down to uh, very close to the Fib seven eight six support mark, which is exactly at seventy two dollars a barrel. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was a development. Given that we came down close to that FIB 786 and were deeply sold, uh, I was. Uh, it uh, it was just an auto automatic for me to begin a uh, uh, buying campaign, just because risk was very low and anything that had gone down so abruptly so quickly. Uh, could at a minimum be uh, expected to bounce somewhat. Well, bounce yes. we have. And I've reviewed things the past 48 hours. Uh, I'll just speculate that low that occurred Tuesday at 72.50 was a bottom in crude oil uh, for the next month uh, and, and maybe longer. Of course, I don't know uh, past that. But that's what I speculate. And I wanted to ask what your uh, tools uh, showed, if if your tools supported such a speculation, or if there's something else you're seeing, please. Absolutely. So I think that the uh, the, the chart is going to uh, help identify uh, whether that was a bottom or not. And the reason is because you have a brand new profile that formed today, John. So the call is very timely. So this new profile is a bullish structured profile, and that says that on any retracements, uh, this should find support between 73.29 and 74.11. That's the buy zone, and the sell zone is at 75.74. And just above that is the red oscillator and chains on at 76.01. So I would say that this is if this is a bottom of consequence that's going to last for weeks or months out there, then we will see those areas of resistance fail. So the good news is you know exactly where it's at, when you're going to get that uh, signal. So I would really be watching that 7601-ish because if, if we get a rally, that's going to go up by a couple of pennies. But if price can clear that oscillator and change line, then I think you're in pretty good shape out there. I don't have necessarily a – I suppose there's a number of different A to B equals CD patterns that are out here. So we could certainly justify uh, the uh, bullish engulfing candle that formed yesterday to confirm a buy the D point pattern. So and and I I do see that 0.786 retracement although it's not shown on the screen here. So we're moving up towards resistance. We move up towards resistance at that 75, 74, 76 or one area. What we like to see are some type of TD9 counts or roads momentum indicator tops that are forming. Turns out that uh, most of the TD9 counts and roads momentum indicator signals have failed on the intraday charts. And I'm talking intraday charts. I'm going from 10, 15, 30, 60 minute and the 120-minute chart, which right now is negating the TD9 count top. So everything looks pretty good there. I would say the other time frame, because I know you study different time frames, John, that you would switch to is a four-hour time frame. And the reason is because you are now in bar number eight. Now, this bar doesn't complete till 2 p.m. So it could be early in the morning when this pattern 
uh, late tonight, early in the morning when this pattern would complete out there. But that's the only, so in addition to the profile level and the oscillating change on a daily time frame, the only real signal that I would want to be tracking here that I see at the moment would come from the four hour time frame. Uh, any questions about what I've been able to share with you so far or any new questions and we can go investigate those. No, uh, looks, uh, <clears throat> looks good. I appreciate your input. I'm going to sign off, but before I do, I'm going to uh, just give kudos to your work and your application thereof to your Thank listeners you. uh, by just remarking and noting what uh, what you shared with the Den and uh, Tiger TV on Tuesday on GPX, the uh, the Precious Metals Miners ETF. It abruptly. And uh, as you were going through the discussion in real time, you were observing, hey, take a look. GDX down at 34.15 was very close, if not sitting right on top of the weekly chart oscillator yes. on change line. Well, yes. it held hey, right there and it's rallying now. So you bet. thank you, John, for that. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back. But just to add to the uh, GDX, uh, John, I wanted to certainly make you aware that there's a new profile, bearish structured profile that is uh, forming today. Price is trading into that sell zone. The sell zone is between $35.55 and $36. Again, I don't know if it was just a swing trade, intraday trade, uh, however long. So that's an area to be watching with regard to the uh, GDX. Let's go take a look at UGA. 
This is for Tom, who wrote in, and as I take a UGA, this has today is confirming a Rhodesman Dominicator bottom with this gap to the upside. You've got a resistance level, small battle at 64.08. The bigger battle should be at 64.62. You clear 64.62, you should rally further. On the weekly time frame chart, uh, I don't see a completion of a pattern just yet. You might get a bullish hammer candle, but that's not going to confirm anything. And on a monthly basis, you're trading with inside profile. Support 5868, resistance 7280 out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at UGA. PPTA is what LB wants to take a look at. He'd like to add to his position. And uh, PPTA? Yeah, I think so. So if you want to add to this position out here, you're inside a bear structured daily profile. If you can get it close below 669, that's the current oscillator and change line. You ought to see you move back to 593. 593 would be the number that I would be looking at out there. I don't see any other top, any other real topping patterns. This road's meant to indicator signal inside the uh, daily time frame. There's a TD9 count that is still in place out there from back on the trading day of uh, April the 9th. So I'd be watching for that. And then lastly, there was a question to take like a ticker symbol HE. So let me put this up on our screen, see if we can get this here before the show closes out. And this is for Vic. Vic, HE is trading below profile support at 1091, below its oscillator and change line, likely wants to head lower. The weekly time frame chart, consolidation with inside its bearish structured profile, may want to target 963. So 963 would really be our lower number. Monthly profiles show that price is trading below the bottom of those profiles as well. So whatever HE is, it's not looking the greatest as we speak right now and likely going to head down towards that $9.63 mark. Whew, we made it, folks. Sorry about coughing in your ear like that. I hate doing that. But anyways, please have a terrific Thursday. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I will be here tomorrow at 11 a.m. sharp. Take care and have a great day.